the interpretation of the Bible is only one. There's only one interpretation. Uh, we may differ on what that is. <laughs> and of course people do. But the Apostle Paul, for example, when he wrote, he didn't mean anything. He meant something. And uh, so the interpretation is one. But the application is many. And especially in that element, uh, we're needing the engaging of the Holy Spirit to know how to do that. I think it was Fee who says, when it comes to application, you need a good imagination and the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit and a good imagination, you know, one of these things, um, because it, it can be many. I think this next point actually brings these two together because this is what I call the challenge for the preacher and the teacher. On the one hand, we uh, have John 15 and need to abide. You know, without me you can do nothing. Um, the life that comes from our connection. But you get Ezra, and this is a, a favourite verse for some SBS people, uh, Ezra 7 verse 10, where it says that Ezra set his heart to study the law of the Lord, to do it, and then to teach it to others. And that, of course, is a very significant uh, process. The, the studying, which is hard work, and then the application to yourself, and then the teaching. Uh, but we have this thing of keeping our own walk with God fresh, recognising our dependency on the Holy Spirit, and, and so there's this, these two sides that we need to be given attention to uh, in the long term of, of our walk with God. There's uh, an interesting comment by uh, Aristotle. Now Aristotle was a pagan, <laughs> a very famous philosopher had a profound influence on the Western world, still, in worldview. And in the ancient Greek world, public speaking and public debating was one of those things that was highly prized. It's known as, as rhetoric. People uh, would actually, we would go and see a movie, but they would go and listen to two people debating different philosophies and it would be kind of an entertainment to see who was the best and uh, uh, but even he who was this expert in public speaking and communication he said something that was really interesting he said uh, communication is made up of three elements the first is uh, what he called the Logos, which are the words, and of course you use words. The second, pathos, which is the passion, the emotion, the way you actually communicate those words. And then ethos. And ethos has to do with the integrity of the person and, and who they are, who's delivering it, and what is interesting is that even he said, of those three, the most important is the ethos, who they are. And so, us being people that are continuing to grow in our walk, to keep short accounts, to be walking in humility, growing, and then the work and the effort, these come together and these are, are foundational. I want to uh, talk about the faithfulness of God to the, the preacher and the teacher. And I say this out of now many years of being involved mostly in teaching, uh, but also at times preaching. And just to testify to the incredible grace and the faithfulness of God in my life as I've done this. Now, I've got there 
two things about uh, two different kinds of anointing. I, I'm not trying to create a theology on this, you understand. This is just kind of the practical way things seem to work. There's the anointing of character and the anointing of appointing. In other words, an anointing that comes with the fact that God has called us to teach. The anointing or the enabling or the unction or, or the effectiveness uh, is connected, I think, to a, a growth in character. And as a young man, I still remember going to conferences or to, to these occasions and and I would hear these speakers and they would be dynamic and they would hold the audience and the press sense of the presence of God was there and, and you're feeling fed and, and they would stand up and they would talk and they'd make it look so easy. And uh, just connected with people and I'd think, wow, you know, these are amazing people and wow, I want to be like that and all this sort of thing. And then I would, I would hear their life journey. And, and I would hear how in their life journey they may have lost a child when they were, were young. Or they'd gone through a, a, a time when they nearly lost their life in sickness. Or, or, or different things that they had gone through, persecution. And what you realise is that these people have got where they've got because they've, they've walked the walk and they've been steady. That, that they may have suffered some kind of injustice, massive injustice. And you realise that as they are there ministering, it's, it, it's not been cheap. Uh, but as they've gone through their life, they have been faithful to to, to be able to forgive or, or to hold on in faith through a different, difficult set of circumstances or, or something. You realise that the, the anointing has grown over their lives as they've considered and continue to be faithful and engaging with God in everything that they've gone through. And so it's as if there's this anointing that grows as we continue to grow in God and, 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 and engage with life as it comes, this kind of thing. But there's something else too, and that is God's faithfulness because we've been called to do what we're doing. And I don't know how to say this other than the reality is we have a privilege of preaching and teaching, but life doesn't always go well. Sometimes life is really difficult. It could be our own journey, things we're walking through. It could be we're struggling with an area of sin. It could be we've had a bereavement in our home. It could be that we're going through other troubles and in the midst of all these things we're wrestling with and we're trying to to break through we we may have just had a big argument with our spouse or you know <laughs> life happens doesn't it uh, a couple of years ago uh, my mother was um, dying uh, she had dementia, she was 86 and she was coming to the end of her life and at the same time my elder brother was fighting cancer he was just 65 or something he was fighting cancer and so we had this period of time when he was deteriorating I was visiting my mother and uh, with the other family members to, to care for her and uh, I had these different teaching trips in Gat and I, 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 we, we'd had one or two times when the doctors had told us that your mother, this is probably tonight, she's probably going to die. Now we'd all gathered around and waited for her to die and she didn't die. <laughs> you know, she would, 
come up again and, 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 and carry on. And it's like, oh, well, we were prepared for this, but it didn't happen, you know. And this happened a couple of times. And so we, we, we're living life. And, and uh, I was uh, invited to teach on the Bible core course out of Lausanne, Switzerland. And one of their core courses, they do six weeks traveling around Israel and different countries. And I was invited to teach Romans in Italy, in Rome. See, it is pretty cool. In, <laughs> you know, c can I say, it, it sounds a lot cooler than it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, teaching Romans in Rome, but what you're actually doing is teaching in a classroom. <laughs> You know, it's not like you're sitting in the Colosseum teaching or something. <laughs> you're sitting in a classroom on a campsite, and so in many ways it's kind of the same. But it's cool. But, but when I was, I, I, should I go, should I not go? I talked to my two sisters, and, and in the end I thought, well, you know, uh, I'm going to go. Because my mother may, the chances are she will not, will still be with us. But when I was there, I had a phone call that she died. And, uh, but I was, and that was, that was of course, a great tragedy. Um, and there was a lot of grieving. But actually, I, I was there to teach. And, and, and so what do I do? Well, I did what I called to do. And you see the grace of God in those moments. You see, I didn't feel like teaching, but I did. The same thing happened actually, huh, I'm just realizing, I was teaching on a Bible core course in Lausanne when my father died. <laughs> that was a number of years, 14, 15 years ago now, but I was actually there and I had a phone call from my brother. Um, but. When I first went to uh, the King's Lodge, I was invited to go there. This is way back in 1985, a long time ago now. But I was invited to go there to start the SBS. And uh, I showed up and I had two staff people with me. We were going to start the SBS and we had 24 students. Now, no one had told us that you shouldn't really run a SBS with two, three staff and 24 <laughs> students and we weren't bright enough to know that you shouldn't do that. You know? <laughs> so we just did it. <laughs> and, uh, but, but during that year, I can honestly say that was the worst year of my life. And it wasn't to do with the school. It had to do with the fact that I during that time, I was courting uh, a girl I'd met in Hawaii. Uh, she was an American. She had come to England. We were building a relationship. And we got engaged. And as soon as we got engaged, it was as if, in me, all kinds of, of fears began to arise. And it, it, was, it was very interesting. Because I, I loved this girl, I really felt it was right, we were great together, it was really good. And then, all of a sudden, it was like, I began to be really frightened and fearful. And I was thinking, why? It just didn't make sense. But the problem with fear is it's very real. You know? Fear is an emotion, isn't it? And, and, and it is really, kind of really, really real, 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 you know. Um, and so here I am, running this school, struggling with these, these, these really strong fears, panic, and I'm thinking, is this God's will? Have I made a mistake? Do I love her? What's going on? And, and, and I'm wrestling with all this stuff. And uh, as I'm... As I'm there, I'm, she's knowing that this is going on and, and she's getting hurt and wondering, does this guy love me? What's wrong? I've come here to England. And, and so all this was kind of multiplying and uh, 
and I was feeling heavy and condemned and and uh, in the end oh and then you have to hear this we had a counseling school we had a counseling school on at the time so um, I was talking with different people but we had a meeting and there was someone who had the ministry of seeing demons cast out of people see this was his thing and I was in this meeting I was actually on the front row and he was preaching away you know and, uh, and, and what he was saying was affecting me because I was struggling with all these fears and, and, he, and, and he actually prayed for me and he said to me, Philip, he said, I can see in you, you have nests of demons of fear. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, yeah, that kind of figures because that's what I feel like. You know. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, is, this really works. So he prayed for me and, and you know, he did his thing and cast it out. And, and uh, the thing actually was that nothing changed. And that is really awkward. You know, someone says you have nests. It's not just demons of fear, but nests of demons of fear and, and prays for you and nothing changes. And that's kind of really unfortunate, you know. So I was in that situation and I actually think he was wrong because I was able eventually to work through and God brought revelation. And, and, uh, but that was a journey. I think one of the things I, I made the mistake was I was reading Psalms where it says things like, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. And it didn't work for me. And I was expecting something instantaneous when actually God was going to take me on a journey. And it was that journey that, you know, God did do that. Um, it's a wonderful story, but that's another story. The point I want to make is I was going through all of this. And I was running this school. And uh, you, you know the King's Lodge. There's this main staircase going up. And at the top of that staircase is the SBS classroom. And I remember having my books and walking up that staircase. And I was thinking, oh God, I have to teach. <laughs> How can I teach? You know, I have to teach. I'm walking up these stairs, and this a long staircase when you feel like that, you know. You get all the way to the top and uh, in, and, and you know, I do my thing as best as I could. And um, I think the students knew I was struggling, and I was talking to some people and what have you. Uh, and and it, was, it was really very difficult. And then, as I say, God took me on a journey, and I actually didn't get married to this girl. I got married a few years later to Linda, and that's another wonderful story. And when we did get married, how is this for a testimony? One of the members of her church came up to her when we were having just after the ceremony, and he said to Linda, I think Philip doesn't know one of the, one of the cultures of America, and that is the groom should be a bit nervous. Because <laughs> I, I wasn't, it was fun. You know, people, some people don't remember their wedding. I remember everything. It was great. But that's the journey God took me on. But, but the point is, this first year, uh, it was really hard and difficult, and, and I was just struggling in many areas. And then, oh, about a few years later, there were two students on that school. There were, of course, more than two. Oh, the other thing that happened is that at Christmas, half the school left. Whoa. See? Whole half left. And that was devastating because I thought, why do they leave? Now, <laughs> the reason they left is because they planned to. <laughs> you know, they planned to come, you know, half the school had planned just to come for one term. And that's how they had planned everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, they just do the New Testament, you see. And, and then 12 of them continued. And, uh, but, but at the time, with all I was going through, it just added to my insecurities, you see, that I was fighting with and all these sort of, really it's just my own brokenness, I think that's could sum it all up. But um, a few years later, 
there was a couple on that school, Rob and Desiree Van Oz from Holland. He ended up uh, working with me on staff uh, on one of the schools and then he went into East Africa and uh, he started a school in Kenya. That's when we had YWAM there, bigger than it is now. He also worked into Albania and he started the SBS back in Holland. And so we became colleagues uh, over these years and we were sitting together talking one, one evening and uh, I remember saying to him, Rob, I'm just so sorry you had to be on that first school. That was just so awful for you with me going through what I was going through. I just feel really sorry that you had to, you had to put up with that. And, and he looked at me and he said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, I was just kind of blah. And, and he looked at me and said, Philip, he said, I love my school. God really blessed me in that school. And we knew you were struggling with some stuff, but, but God really used that school. And uh, uh, this to me is God's anointing because he's called us to something. Many times if you are teaching regularly and consistently, not many times, there will be those times when the last thing you want to do, you may feel sick, you're going through stuff, circumstances, your kids are playing up, all sorts of things to be going on, and God's faithfulness is just wonderful. And I think that the, the key is knowing the fact that often in their weakness, his strength is made perfect. One of the questions that's often asked is, uh, you know, the difference between preaching and teaching. And I would have very many definitions coming. Uh, but I think the very most helpful definition actually came from Tom Bloomer. <laughs> he years ago came to one of their schools and, and I really liked how he spoke about the difference uh, because what he did was he, he talked about how you have uh, two things that are needed in any speaking and uh, one is motivation, you want people to respond to what you say but also you need instruction and the, uh, rather than this is teaching or this is not teaching it's a bit like a continuum whereby uh, uh, what you need in both teaching and preaching is you need both of these although the amount may be a, bit, a little bit different so in, in teaching what you'll do is you bring in a lot of instruction but you want people to engage with what you're learning and, uh, and do it, change when it comes to preaching, preaching may tend to have more motivation. Rather than teaching lots of things, there may be one point you're trying to get across and you want people to respond to it. But there also needs to be good instruction. I, as occasionally I've been to uh, a, a church and there's been a great message from the pastor and it's been exciting and, and vibrant and you, you get stirred up and, and when you leave you think wow that was great but if someone says what was it about you say well I'm not really sure but it was really great you know <laughs> um, because it's been high on, 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 on inspiration but not a lot of content and of course the extreme for teaching is it's just a lot of facts and stuff and, and it can be very dry. And I do think that we have different gifts. Some people are naturally preachers. I spoke about coming back from Hawaii and uh, starting my the SBS there. I had two people come with me and one of them was a, a young woman. Her name was Connie. 
and this lady was and still is one of the most out there evangelists I know. Just passionate. Uh, you, you get around her, you, you're inspired. She is a great preacher. And it's so interesting that she would be with me, God would, would put her, that we would, because she was innovative and she was spontaneous and, and all the things you need when you're starting a school. And she worked with me two years before she moved out into other areas. Uh, but I still remember how, for example, uh, the, she was teaching the book of, of uh, Jonah. And when she was teaching, she would do like the, the background stuff, the, that kind of stuff for the uh, SBS. And, and, and she would teach and she would be a bit awkward and it, it wouldn't kind of be very smooth. And then she would get to the application and it was like a skyrocket took off, you know. It was just, she was preaching and, and uh, um, sharing her heart about the last and, and all this sort of thing. Um, and we, we have our, our different gifts and, and I think each one of us would find where we, we naturally fit. I'm more of a teacher. I try to preach, but I'm more of a teacher. And, and one of the things is it's important to me that people understand what I'm saying. It's important that people get some stuff that they can learn and grow. And I was just reflecting on the meeting on on, wet, on Thursday, when I was teaching about Psalm 3, I want people not just to understand Psalm 3, but to read Psalms more effectively. <laughs> so I, I want them to know there's different kinds of Psalms. And I want them to know Psalms are occasional. And I want them to, to know how to engage with the poetry. Because I want them to be able to not just understand Psalm 3, but hopefully enjoy Psalms more other psalms. Now whether that's worked or not I've no idea but the motivation is I want them to get that. So we have our different gifts and uh, um, but whatever our, our, our emphasis maybe we can do both. Some people are good they can preach or they can teach uh, whatever's necessary but we do need to make sure that there's always motivation and there's always instruction uh, a good solid content in their preaching just uh, one more thing before we move into preparing a message I want to give you a model for this I call this what's your rear we have to just give attention and know that when we finish speaking that can be a time of vulnerability and that vulnerability can be uh, those things that I have on the screen there if we've done really well then there's of course the danger of pride aren't I great? I'm just, I, 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 I am the next Billy Graham, just waiting around the corner, you know, please stand aside, here I come. Uh, there can be discouragement because you have poured your heart into preparing this message, it's taken a lot of effort, a lot of work, you stand up and it seems to have gone flat. I've known that. You think, what was all that about? I worked so hard. <laughs> uh, or even condemnation. You're a complete failure. What are you doing? Why are you doing what you're doing? And it's good just to recognize that these things can happen. I believe that uh, it can be uh, out of our own insecurity. It can be out of the fact that uh, we, we, we're not confident in, in what God has called us to at times and it can be an attack of the enemy, the devil, to try and bring us down. And so let me say 
that if you do experience this, you can think, ha, huh, yes, Philip said this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> Let me deal with it. You can get a friend, pray with you, but just know that this happens at times. It's one of those things that um, it is part of, of the, the course. We need to guard against it. Yes? Could you also include um, emotions going up and down? And like, often you'll f and then also going sick, maybe. Can I say that what he said is, is actually really important? The thing you mentioned about emotions. Yeah. If it's a really big event for you, or it's the first time you've done it, what you do is you put a load of emotional energy into it. And emotions, you know, this is not the devil, this is just a makeup. <laughs> you know, if you have an emotional high, then you have a low. That's, that's how it works. And uh, I think, Stuart, what you said is really important. Sometimes it's just that emotional letdown. Uh, or you feel, that was great, thank you Lord, that was wonderful, that was amazing, you know. And you want to be very clear to say, thank you God, you're amazing. Not, I'm amazing. <laughs> God does use us. And when people bring compliments, and people will do that, one of the things you don't want to do is we say, oh no, it wasn't me, it was God. Um, oh, I was nothing. I'm just a worm. <laughs> um, just, just thank people for their encouragement. Thank you. But in your heart, say thank you, God. <laughs>